I grew up playing Gary's Mod. I probably have something around 6,000 hours in it, even though that's very embarrassing to say. <laughs> very embarrassing for me, at least, to, to admit such a such a crime. But um, I was always infatuated with the idea of uh, creating a game mode or creating uh, models or a map or something. Something creative, something productive. But now with the announcement of Sandbox, a new game being made by Face Punch and Gary, uh, I decided to pick up this, this hobby once again and make my own game mode. So in this series, we're going to be going through the different steps I'm taking as I make my first Sandbox game mode. We'll start with modeling and then move into making materials and mapping and finally coding. So quite a bit of work to do. So hopefully it's interesting watching my progress and the progress of this game mode as a whole. So we're starting off very simple with a wooden plank. Very simple, very low poly count. Uh, I'm going for low poly count models here because I'm going to paint over these later on uh, and give it more of a stylized appearance. So I'm starting with uh, this wooden plank, giving it some very slight variation. Once I have this first plank complete, I copied it over, duplicated it larger, make it uh, a little bit wider, a little bit longer. And then once again, repeat with yet another variation. So I want many different versions of this plank. And here you'll notice I tried making sort of like a, a cracked, ruined piece of wood, but it turned out really ugly. So later on, I, I'd make a lot of adjustments to this. And then continue with another copy of that uh, with more variation. Okay, so right there we have Let's see, what is that? Uh, seven different pieces of wood. That means seven different paintings. Okay, so wood's done for now, and we're gonna move on to uh, the next part. Let's see how long it takes for you to figure out what this is. So take a look. We have a cylinder. What is this? What could it be? longer now oh yes yes i'm sure you know now it's a barrel um <clears throat> making some barrels just one for now because uh, how many barrels do you really need you know maybe i should make more though seeing as i have what seven different pieces of wood now painting the barrel is going to be a bit more of a challenge because on barrels we're going to have metal as well as wood so it, that means uh several different textures well that's going to be a bit more time consuming and then we move on to the next part, uh, making a table. Very simple once again, but once I once I paint over it, the poly count doesn't really matter. But we're, think of it like, wow, World of Warcraft. Those models in that game are generally going to be very low poly count or uh, lower than you would expect from uh, a very large game. And that's because it's stylized and painted over, so it's not they don't need the vertices. They don't need the polygons. If you were going for a realistic looking model, this would be the completely wrong approach. You would need quite a bit more poly count and you would need non painted textures generally. So in this table, I'm making the ends a bit extruded just to give it a, a variety again. And then I'm having these parts extrude these are going to be uh, metal beams across the table, making them a bit wider, a bit uh, taller, so they're more noticeable. If I'm going for a painted look, I'm also going to try to have uh, more of a, a cartoony or exaggerated appearance of the models themselves. So here I'm making these little uh, outhangings. I don't know what you'd call them. Um, little pieces that will attach to the wood and have some chains or rope or in this case, a metal hook that we're going to create in a moment. Pretty simple. Putting that ring inside the outcropping or out hanging or out jetting. Separating the legs a little bit because um, looked too close together. 
to go topple over. And then I put this this out hanging <laughs> into the table, and I wasn't very happy with the way it looked, so I extruded the the edge a bit more, and um, then I was happy with it. Now, next part of this game mode is going to require props to be connected together. Think of welding, for example, from Gary's mod. But I need some sort of prop to show that two other props are connected or welded together. So I started making uh, a nail. And I was really struggling with this. Uh, you'll t you can tell that I have a lack of carpentry experience because I don't know anything about the appearance of nails. Uh, so what I did is I put a reference image in the background there and I started copying that. Uh, and then I was pretty happy with it. Looks pretty nice, I think. So here I make a few different varieties of the nail, some that are longer, just so that way if two props are farther apart and they're welded, it, it still appears kind of realistic or, or like it makes sense. Then I move on to a part that was very, very difficult for me. Uh, probably the biggest challenge here in this entire prop modeling was the ore. I made an ore because this game was going to be very reliant on water in the ocean and uh, making boats. This would uh, make sense to have it as a prop and maybe later turn it into a weapon or, or a way to steer the boat. This top part was looking really ugly for quite a while. I'm actually cutting out a lot of uh, the video where I was struggling with uh, making this top part. So I gave up on that for a minute, decided to put the reference image a little closer and then sort of trace. You'll notice a lot of people do this method when they're uh, stuck on a, on a model or when they want to make it a little easier, tracing the model. Here I was struggling trying to match up the different sides of the, the model. And then I realized there's, a, <laughs> there's something called a mirror modifier in Blender. So if you put a line down the middle of a prop and you delete half of it, you can put on this mirror modifier, which takes the remaining side of the prop or the model and then mirrors it to the other side. So that way the changes you make on one side reflects or mirrors on the other. So I put that in and that solved my problems. And then I extruded the, the uh, line down the middle just to give it a bit of a, a bit better in appearance. on the mirror modifier right away uh, to make it look nice and this looked all right but the problem i noticed was on the corners there on the on the top left and right side you have these really sharp pointed corners and that's not realistic even for a cartoony style model it just looks ugly so i, I split that single vertice into two and made it a little wider that solved my problems finally i had it looking pretty good now I'm attaching those three pieces together, three pieces of the plank. This part's going to be a little tough when I decide to paint it, as uh, I'm going to have to blend these two shapes together a little bit, um, but I think it should be all right. When I do paint these, I'm going to have to shade them all smooth as well. so. And that's a process in Blender where you take these really sharp looking lines and you basically flatten them. So I'm going to do that before I paint, which should help quite a bit. All right, making that look a little nicer. And there we go, we have a, a decent looking ore or paddle or whatever you call these. Now I'm taking one of those rings that I created for the table and, and making that separate just because uh, maybe it'd be cool to have these metal rings as a prop. Not quite sure what I'd use them for yet, but better to have them than not have them. So I got those now. Finally, I decided uh, maybe I needed some sticks or twigs. So I make a few of these variations. Started with a pretty simple one right here. And then I copied it, of course, duplicate it, make some other changes, duplicate it again after I'm happy with that. Yep, now I duplicated a third time. Give myself a, a new new twig. Take these edges here and make them pointy just so it looks as realistic as possible. 
All right, so slowing it down again. Now we have our four twigs, seven pieces of wood. The barrel is ready. Those two little metal rings are down there. Uh, we also have our table, the nails, and finally the oars. All of this took me about an hour in total. Uh, it was about an hour, hour and a half of work. And the only reason it took me that amount of time is because uh, I've been practicing Blender for a little while, maybe a few months. If I would have tried this when I first started, even though it's it's very simple, the, the work I did was very simple, uh, it would have taken me far longer. So hopefully you enjoyed the process and stay around for the next video, which will come out very soon of me painting the models. Thank you.